Good morning, and welcome to the Missouri Public Safety Medal Ceremony for heroic acts performed during 2020. We sincerely appreciate all of you joining us in this ceremony today, whether in person or online. I am the Department of Dire Public Safety Director, Sandy Karsten, and I will serve as your MC today as we recognize some of Missouri's outstanding public safety partners. We're grateful to have Governor Parson with us today to make the presentation of three public safety awards, the Medal of Valor, the Governor's Award, and the Public Safety Civilian Partnership Award. Thank you, Governor, for joining us and for recognizing the incredible contributions of our heroic first responders and the extraordinary efforts these fearless and courageous civilians have displayed. As we recognize the work of Missouri's first responders, please remember this is for acts in 2020. We know that public safety presents challenging, difficult work each and every day. We also recognize that in recent years, our first responders face increasing challenges. The support shown by many Missourians is appreciated and helps strengthen the resolve to continue to serve and protect. We are pleased this morning to be joined by a man who spent more than half a century in the ministry, having served in churches in California, Tennessee, and Missouri. He's a longtime public safety partner working closely with first responders and peace officers in his roles as a county clerk and presiding commissioner for Hickory County. Reverend Kent Parson will now lead us in prayer. I'd ask that you rise and remain standing for the national anthem and the pledge. Reverend Parson. Would you please join me in prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege that's ours to be here this morning. Thank you for the privilege to live in the greatest country upon the face of the earth, to live among a people that are so blessed by you, and we pray that you will continue to bless. Thank you for each one of these who are going to be honored this morning, for the commitments that they've made, not only in the acts which they've performed, but in their lives every day. Thank you, Lord, for each one of them, for their families who share their lives with them. Bless each one of our people who are serving others. May we always be reminded that that is a part of being a good neighbor. We pray this morning for each one that needs our prayers for our nation, our people who are serving in the military, for all of our people who are serving others in whatever capacity that might be. We pray this morning for our speaker. Pray that you'll continue to guide and direct him. Bless each one of us and guide us and help us to always be mindful that all the good things of life do come from you and that it is a privilege for each one of us to live among so great a people. We ask these blessings in your name and for your sake. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Parson. We will be led in the National Anthem by Clora Lindley Myers. Clora is the director of the Missouri Department of Commerce and Insurance. She's a longtime public safety partner. While serving in the Tennessee Department of Commerce and Insurance, she oversaw the Tennessee Law Enforcement Academy. Clora and her DCI team are also strong advocates for strengthening public safety as we work to protect Missourians and prepare for and recover from disasters. She's been involved in that a lot. But when we celebrated the Statehood Day, I heard her sing. We were in a public ceremony and uh, she was just singing. It wasn't uh, in front of a group. And so when I heard her sing, I thought, oh, we need her to share that talent with us uh, in our public safety award ceremony. And so that's why she's here today. Also presenting the colors today is the Missouri State Highway Patrol Troop F Color Guard. Troop F, 
please present the colors. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars to the perilous fight or the we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangle Thank you, Director Lindley Myers. Please join me as we say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Troop F Color Guard. Please be seated. Before we begin the presentations, I want to say a special thanks to members of the Medal of Valor Review Board. They considered many nominations and selected today's honorees. We're fortunate to have several members of the Review Board with us today. Longtime Review Board Chairwoman Victoria Myers. Thank you, Vic. Um, Department of Public Safety Deputy Director Kevin Bond. Metro West Fire Protection District Firefighter Katie Wiegand Carr. And Greene County Sheriff Jim Arnott. Thank you all. I know that uh, you had a lot of applications. They were all quality, and, and we appreciate the time and effort that you spent reviewing those nominations, so thank you. Also joining us today are members of the Governor's Cabinet, Office of Administration Sarah Steelman, Missouri Department of Labor Director Anna Hugh, representing the Department of Mental Health Angie Stuckensnyder, and of course Director of Commerce and Insurance, Director Cora Lindley Myers. 
And on his first day as a member of the governor's cabinet, having just been sworn in, Department of Health and Senior Services Director Don Karoff. Welcome to Missouri, Don. We're very glad to have you. Finally, I'd like to introduce the Department of Public Safety Division Directors who were able to join us today. Missouri State Highway Patrol Colonel Eric Olson. Missouri State Fire Marshal Tim Bean. Missouri Capitol Police Chief Zim Swartz. Where are you, Zim? Okay. And representing the State Emergency Management Agency, Deputy Director Terry Castle. Thank you all for joining us today. We appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedules to participate in this ceremony. This is one of those days that uh, I look forward to each year. And as a person who's worked in public safety for over 36 years and who deals with law enforcement and the fire service every day, I have an understanding and a continued respect and appreciation for the incredibly important work our Missouri first responders do. But each year, I continue to be inspired and moved as I read their stories of heroic, selfless actions. It is my true honor to be a part of this ceremony and to meet the award winners each year. The responders we honor today represent the highest ideals of public safety professionals. Their individual stories are unique, but they have in common a steadfast commitment serving others despite the risk to their own safety. They have all exhibited courage in the face of danger, decisiveness in the face of difficult and trying circumstances, and compassion for the citizens we serve. We're also fortunate to have exceptional civilian award winners this year, including the youngest winner in the history of this award, their stories are truly extraordinary. They acted with bravery, determination, incredible resolve, ingenuity to overcome obstacles, and to save lives. Congratulations to all of our honorees. Governor Parson understands how exceptional Missouri's public safety professionals are. He experienced this through his 22 years as a member of law enforcement, after a decade of service as a deputy sheriff, Governor Parson was elected Polk County Sheriff and served for 12 years. As we've witnessed throughout his long career, the governor is a tireless supporter of public safety responders and all those who work to strengthen safety in our communities. He's been committed to making Missouri safer through his years in the Missouri House, the Missouri Senate, as the Lieutenant Governor and now as our Governor. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct honor to introduce the 57th Governor of the State of Missouri, Governor Mike Parson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you and good morning. Please be seated. All right, you folks are going to have to lighten up a little bit in here this morning. I, I, I know we're here to give awards out today, but uh, how about core of the national anthem? Did you like that for the national anthem, huh? <laughs> just because you're in these highway patrol buildings doesn't mean you can't act like normal, you know, just because you're in here, so trust me, so it's okay. How about the color guard, the highway patrol this morning in there? I know a lot of my cabinet members are here today. They always come to these events, and they don't have to do that. But I just appreciate all of you being here today and the service you make. And Don, welcome to Missouri as our newest cabinet member. How about that? And then the director of public safety, uh, not only is she a director, a very good friend that I've served with a long time when I wore those uniforms when she was with the Highway Patrol and a distinguished career of her own the Director of Public Safety, Sandy Carson. Now, w when I started up, up here, and Chloe come up here, and she sang the national anthem, and I helped her up on the stage. Now, there's a reason for that. She's not helpless, so I, I want to make sure you know that. She had just had some surgery done uh, on a foot, 
And so I was helping her off there. So when my brother, Reverend Pastor uh, Parson, he got ready to go off the stage. He says, you're going to help me down. He's whispering at my ear. So I'm going to push you down if you don't get off this stage is what, what, what I told him. So, But that's a family deal. I can get away with saying that. Uh, he doesn't know the difference between Governor and Mike yet. So on that, which, which is a good thing. So first of all, let me just thank everybody for being here. Uh, another special guest here this morning that's not always with me, but he was with me a lot, the First Lady of the State of Missouri. Would you please welcome her? A little history on the First Lady. The First Lady lost her brother uh, as an EMT on duty uh, in that family, and her other brother was a retired highway patrolman, so had been around law enforcement for a long time uh, to do that. So we have felt the uh, share of heartbreak in, in our own family from time to time. I lost an officer in the line of duty when I was sheriff. I had one shot six times and survived, thank goodness, and he's continued working in law enforcement. But as I look at everybody in the room today and I look at the uniforms scattered out here, I look at the kids that are out here, um, I look at the parents that are out here and family members and just people here showing their respect. The one thing I learned from serving in the Army and as a law enforcement officer, and I think all these men and women would tell you the same, you, I get wearing a badge, I get wearing a gun, I get having authority, all that. But at the end of the day, and why we're honoring people today, is because at the end of the day, you are a public servant, no more, no less. I don't care what your rank is, what your title is, you're supposed to be out here helping people every day, doing what it is that most people don't want to do, to be right honest about it. That's why we're here today, to honor some selected individuals that have did some heroic things but basically did their duty, what they're supposed to do every day. And I think sometimes we take that for granted as Missourians. Uh, we kind of expect law enforcement to ever answer a call, and they do. We expect EMTs, firefighters, all the emergency personnel to do their jobs without hesitation. And let's be honest, for a lot of you sitting in these seats, it's the job most of us don't want to do in today's time. That's why you depend on them to do it. That's why these kids uh, that are here today probably don't know the meaning yet quite of what's going on here today, but because they're here today, they're going to remember this day and they will remember the people, the men and women that come up here on the stage today to be honored. And that's what's important. It's important you're willing to sacrifice for others and put them above you. And I think that's one of the highest callings as a public servant. One thing I have learned in my career, you can take governor, lieutenant governor, you can take army sergeant, you can take sheriff, throw the titles out the window, but at the end of the day, I'm supposed to be here to help people. And that's what I should be focused on every day. And I know the men and women that wear these uniforms, although there's been some difficult times here in the last several years, to say the least. But I guarantee I want all you men and women that are here today to know one thing. The people in this country, the people in this state, the vast majority of people stand behind you every day to do your job. So today, we're going to be honoring a selected few people here today, and I'd say probably everybody deserves recognition at some point in their careers. But I think it is so important that we do honor the one, those selected fews. And uh, as, as the director said, one of the youngest members we've ever recognized today, uh, I think 12 years old, if I, if I remember reading the brief. I'm kind of anxious for that one myself. I'm kind of excited about that one. But no matter how old you are, where you live, or where it is, Again, it's just about helping other people out when you have to help other people out. That's who we are uh, as Missourians, and that's why I'm proud to be the governor of this state. That's why I'm thankful all of you are here today. You know, you could easily stay at home today. You could easily found something else in your lives you're scheduled to do, but you came here just to show respect. And that's one thing we need to do a little bit more of uh, in life in general is how we treat one another and what it is we do when the time calls. So. I want to tell you, couldn't be more proud to be here today as be one of everybody that's here as just an everyday Missourian. Couldn't be more proud to wear the uniform as a law enforcement officer and be involved with some wonderful people, some great people over my career. And I continue to get to be a public servant just like all of you. So again, thanks everybody for being here today. It is a honor and privilege to be your 57th governor of the great state of Missouri. God bless you. God bless Missouri and God bless the United States of America. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Governor. And uh, as sometimes I do, I, I fail to uh, recognize one member of our review board who is here, um, and that is Supreme Court Marshal Albert Marshall. So, Albert, thank you for joining us today. And Chief Zim Swartz is here. She's in the back. So thank you for joining us, Chief Swartz. And the governor has my back. I neglected to introduce the first lady, so I was just saving it for you, sir. All right, before we begin the presentations, I want to let all of the families and friends know that the photos of today's ceremony will be posted to the governor's Flickr page, which can be accessed directly from the governor's website, governor.mo.gov. And also, for those of you who would like to take your own photos, you're welcome together to my right along the side of the stage, and we'll have the governor and each individual award winner also turn in your direction so you can get a photo. And today's ceremony is being live streamed on the Department of Public Safety Facebook page right now. If you'd like to view the video later, just go to DPS's homepage, dps.mo.gov, and click on the Facebook symbol at the top right. The order in which the awards will be presented is outlined in your program. And following the final award presentation, we will take a group photo. And our first award is the Missouri Medal of Valor, our state's highest public safety award for extraordinary life-saving actions. To be eligible for this award, a person must be serving a public safety agency as a firefighter, a law enforcement officer, or an emergency response role. State and local corrections officers and court and civil defense officers are also included in this category. For acts performed during 2020, I would like to call Sergeant Jason M. Wegeman and Deputy Sheriff Ronald R. Burgess of the Franklin County Sheriff's Office to join us on stage. On March 21st, 2020, Sergeant Wegeman was conducting traffic enforcement on Interstate 44 in the Villa Ridge area. At about 9.30 p.m., he attempted to stop a vehicle driving in excess of 90 miles an hour. The driver ignored Sergeant Wegeman's lights and siren and refused to pull over. Deputy Sheriff Ronald Burgess quickly joined the pursuit. Ahead of the pursuit, another deputy sheriff deployed spike strips, which disabled the fleeing vehicle. The fleeing motorist then abruptly pulled into a gas station that was open for business. Deputies moved to block the vehicle from attempting to exit. Immediately upon stopping, the driver exited his vehicle and fired a handgun multiple times at Deputy Burgess, whose patrol car had yet to come to a complete stop. As Deputy Burgess took cover behind his dashboard, the gunman began firing at Sergeant Wegeman. With deputies under fire and customers and gas station employees endangered, Wegeman and Burgess were forced to return fire. Each was seriously wounded after being shot by the gunman, but despite their wounds, they were able to shoot the gunman and end the tremendous threat to everyone at the scene. Sergeant Wegeman, please receive your award. Deputy Sheriff Burgess, please receive your award. Thank you, officers. Sergeant Michael J. Ottolini and Detective Lee Alex Clausen of the Jefferson City Police Department, please come forward and join us on stage. 
Detective Clausen has been promoted since the following events occurred. On the night of April 15, 2020, Jefferson City Police Department officers conducted an investigation into ongoing drive-by shootings into homes on the west side of the city. A suspect vehicle was identified and an officer attempted to make a traffic stop, but the driver refused to stop and a pursuit began. After a nine-minute pursuit through several neighborhoods, the driver and a passenger fled the vehicle. While another officer pursued the driver, Sergeant Adelini, who had joined the pursuit, and Officer Clausen, who had arrived on the scene to assist, pursued the passenger into a wooded area with thick brush and fallen trees. Early in the foot chase, Sergeant Adelini saw the suspect reach into his waistband for what he believed was a weapon. Officer Clausen jumped over a chain link fence and tackled the suspect to the ground. While struggling with the suspect, Officer Clausen was shot twice in the abdomen. Officer Clausen now tried to push away the gun, which he saw in the man's right hand. He called out to Sergeant Ottolini, he shot me. As the gunman continued to fight Officer Clausen, Sergeant Ottolini, to protect Clausen from being shot again, pulled him away from the gunman and drew his service pistol. The gunman, still armed and posing a threat to both officers, was shot by Sergeant Ottolini, ending the threat. He died at the scene. Officer Clausen was transported to a hospital. His ballistic vest had prevented one round from penetrating his body. The second round caused a laceration to his lower torso. After pursuing a gunman suspected of terrorizing a neighborhood, and Officer Clausen being shot by the suspect, Clausen and Sergeant Ottolini displayed tremendous courage under duress in ending the threat to themselves and the community. Sergeant Ottolini, please receive your award. <laughs> Detective Clausen, please receive your award. Thank you, officers. Sergeant Heather M. Anderson of the Springfield Police Department, please come forward and join us on stage. On the morning of June 9th, 2020, a man acting erratically briefly entered the Springfield Police Department headquarters. He returned outside and urinated on the building. He then repeatedly drove through the building's west parking lot. Officer Mark Preby and Sergeant Anderson both went to the parking lot to investigate. Officer Preby walked south and Sergeant Anderson walked north. At this point, the man driving a white SUV re-entered the parking lot and drove in the direction of Officer Preby at a high rate of speed. Officer Preby motioned for the driver to stop and pull into a parking space. Instead, the driver immediately turned sharply, accelerated, and headed straight for Officer Preby. The officer attempted to move out of the vehicle's path, but he was struck, run over, and pinned under the vehicle, which was now blocked by a bollard on the sidewalk. With Officer Preby pinned underneath, the engine revving, and the driver appearing to be attempting to move the vehicle, Sergeant Anderson swiftly moved toward the driver's side of the SUV, repeatedly calling for the driver to stop. When he did not, she fired her duty weapon, striking the driver in the upper arm. The driver stopped, put the vehicle in park, and raised his hands in the air and surrendered to Sergeant Anderson. With Officer Preby's life in immediate peril, Sergeant Anderson took swift and decisive action to end the threat and save Preby's life. Officer Preby, a 24-year police veteran, was paralyzed. While he spent months undergoing rehabilitation, he is confined to a wheelchair. The investigation revealed that the assailant had sent a text message the morning of the attack that he intended to run a cop over. We're pleased that Officer Preby is able to join us today and is with several other members of the Springfield Police family in the audience. Thank you for being here, Mark.
Sergeant Anderson, please receive your award. Corporal Jason A. Ashby of the Missouri State Highway Patrol, please come forward and join us on stage. On the evening of July 24th, 2020, Corporal Ashby was off duty and a passenger on a boat with four others on Lake of the Ozarks. As the boat traveled south near the 18 mile marker of the main channel, just after midnight, it was struck on the port side by another boat in a major crash. Corporal Ashby was knocked unconscious. When he regained consciousness, he and the boat operator immediately went to assist the three other passengers, a mother, father, and their 13-year-old daughter. The mother had been killed in the crash. A resident on shore flashed an exterior light. Corporal Ashby shouted for the person to call 911 and request three ambulances and a helicopter. Working in darkness, Ashby found that the teenager was not breathing and had no pulse. He moved her to the rear bench of the boat and began CPR. At one point, the patient had a weak pulse, but it quickly faded. The boat operator was tending to the girl's father, who had a weak pulse and shallow breathing. Corporal Ashby directed the operator to restart the boat and head for shore. At shore, Corporal Ashby carried the girl off the boat and on a wooden dock, continued to perform CPR for several more minutes. Eventually, the girl began breathing again. When EMS arrived, Corporal Ashby and an unidentified man carried the girl off the dock, up a steep flight of stairs, and EMS took over her care and then flew her and her father to a hospital. Corporal Ashby was later transported to a hospital where he was treated for his own injuries. The girl spent time on a ventilator and her father required surgery, but they have each made remarkable re recoveries. The operator of the other vessel was charged with boating while intoxicated. Corporal Ashby's decisive action and relentless determination in an emergency situation, despite his own injuries, saved the young girl's life. Corporal Ashby, please receive your award. Thank you, Corporal Ashby. Officer John K. Gresco II of the St. Charles County Police Department, please come forward and join us on stage. On August 9, 2020, St. Charles County was inundated with about four inches of rain in two hours as severe thunderstorms roared through the darkness. At about 1 a.m., Officer Gresco was dispatched to report of a vehicle stuck in flood water on Pittman Road. Upon arrival, Officer Gresco found a different vehicle stuck in rapidly rising flood water. The driver was climbing out of his window to get on top of the vehicle's roof. Officer Gresco had grown up in the area and knew immediate action was required because when it floods, the creek nearby rises to seven to 10 feet with an unforgiving current. As the water rose above the level of the trunk, Officer Gresco quickly moved through the water to the vehicle, which was now being carried toward the rising creek with the driver on the roof. Gresco knew if the vehicle reached the swift water of the creek, the driver's chances of survival would be slim. Officer Gresco was clinging to a submerged guardrail to avoid being swept away himself. With the vehicle floating in his direction and the driver on the roof desperately calling for assistance, Gresco risked his own life and moved toward the vehicle. When the vehicle ran into some brush, Gresco convinced the victim to jump to him. Gresco grabbed the victim and then helped him maneuver through the flood water to safety. In the dark, in rising, swirling flood water, and with no time to wait for rescue teams and equipment, Officer Gresco calmly and courageously risked his own life to take immediate action, saving a flooding victim about to be swept away. Officer Gresco, please receive your award. Thank you, Officer Gresco. Officers Ryan W. Broker 
Andrew C. Manteline of the Chesterfield Police Department, and Officer Devin R. Kittrell of the St. Peter's Police Department, please come forward and join us on stage. Officer Kittrell was a member of the Chesterfield Police Department when the following events occurred. Early on the morning of September 23, 2020, Chesterfield Police Officers Broker, Kittrell, and Mantelaine were working the midnight shift to investigate a rash of auto break-ins as part of a plainclothes undercover assignment. At about 2.45 a.m., they responded to a call for a vehicle that had, been, that had struck a tree at a high rate of speed. The vehicle was extremely damaged with the front end crushed in. As the officers approached the vehicle, they noticed the glow of fire beneath the car. They attempted to enter the vehicle, but the heavy damage prevented entry. The driver had been killed on impact. Additional officers arrived on the scene and they were able to get the car open and see an injured passenger who was conscious but trapped, severely entangled in the wiring of the engine compartment of the vangled vehicle. Fire quickly fully engulfed the engine and passenger compartments. With no fire crews on scene, immediate action was required to save the victim's life. Officers Broker, Kittrell, and Mantelaine ignored the danger to themselves and amidst the fire, smoke, and heat, worked together to cut the victim out of the wiring and debris. Officer Broker used a fire extinguisher as the fire encroached further, then assisted Officers Kittrell and Mantelaine in pulling the victim from the burning wreckage. Moments after the victim had been freed, there was an explosion inside the car. The officers moved the victim farther away from the vehicle until medical help could arrive. Uniform officers had spotted the vehicle numerous times traveling recklessly and at high speeds in the area. Despite the danger to themselves in overcoming smoke, heat, and fire, officers Broker, Kittrell, and Mantelaine's brave and decisive action likely saved the victim's life. Officer Broker, please receive your award. Officer Kittrell, please receive your award. And Officer Mantelaine, please receive your award. Our next award is the Governor's Medal, which is awarded to a group of first responders who collective, whose collective performance as a team is essential in the response to a critical incident. Will the following please come forward and join us on stage? Officers Mitchell D. Griffith, Dustin P. Hitchcock of the St. John Police Department, Officer Michael W. Mertz of the Crestwood Police Department, and Officer Chad W. Himbry of the Woodson Terrace Police Department, and Captain Duran Meeks of the Kinlock Fire Department. Officer, <laughs> Officer Mertz was a member of the St. John Police Department when the following events occurred. On the night of June 22, 2020, first responders were dispatched to an Applebee's restaurant on St. Charles Rock Road in St. John for an active shooter incident with several victims. A customer had left his table, retrieved a gun from his vehicle, and re-entered the restaurant, shooting randomly. At the scene, witnesses informed St. John police officers Griffith, Hitchcock, and Mertz that the gunman had fled and there were three gunshot victims inside. Two victims were on one side of the restaurant, the third was on the other side. Officers Griffin and Mertz first went to the two victims who were together. One was already deceased. Officers Griffin and Mertz tended to the survivor whose injuries were serious but not life-threatening. There was now a loud commotion on the other side of the restaurant. There, Officer Hitchcock and Captain Meeks of the Kinlock Fire Department were providing life-saving care to a gunshot victim who was in desperate need of immediate attention. It was a fellow firefighter from the Kinlock Department. Arlita Buford, 
who had been shot while off duty and dining at the restaurant with Meeks. Officer Mertz, as an on-scene supervisor, oversaw securing the chaotic crime scene, preservation of evidence, and identifying witnesses. Griffith went to the victim's aid, assisting Captain Meeks and Officer Hitlock, Hitchcock. The victim had been shot in the head and was bleeding profus profusely as she lay on the floor between the rows of tables. She also had injuries to both arms. Officer Hitchcock applied a tourniquet to the victim's left arm and advised St. Louis County Dispatch to expedite an ambulance to the scene. Hitchcock and Meats then determined there was no time to wait for an ambulance because of the severity of the trauma and immediate transport to a hospital was required in a patrol vehicle. Woodson Terrace Police Officer Chad Hembry, Officer Griffin, and Captain Meeks then carried the victim outside to Officer Griffith's patrol car. Griffith then rushed the victim to DePaul Hospital with Captain Meeks continuing to provide medical care to the victim. In the middle of a chaotic shooting scene, through a combination of teamwork, quick thinking, and resourcefulness, the actions of Captain Meeks, Officer Hitchcock, Griffin, Hembry, and Mertz played a crucial role in saving the life of firefighter Arlita Buford. The alleged gunman was arrested early the next day. We are pleased that Mrs. Buford was able to join us today in the audience. Officer Griffith, please receive your award. Officer Hitchcock, please receive your award. Officer Mertz, please receive your award. Officer Hembry, please receive your award. Captain Meeks, please receive your award. Thank you, officers. What a what a great display of teamwork. award is the Public Safety Civilian Partnership Award for courageous service by a civilian to assist responders in emergency situations. Will Mr. Curtis Brown please come forward to join us on stage? Mr. Brown was nominated by the Missouri State Highway Patrol. On May 27, 2020, an armored truck accidentally traveled off the right side of Route J in Camden County, overcorrected and crossed the center line and slid off the left side of the road. It then crashed into a large tree, which caused the armored truck to catch fire. The tremendous impact with the tree also jammed the doors shut. The driver and passenger, unable to open the doors and surrounded by thick bulletproof glass, were trapped within the vehicle, which was filling with smoke as the fire grew. Southwest Electric Cooperative staking technician Curtis Brown was returning to his office in Preston when he noticed a truck stopped in the middle of the road and a distressed woman. She told him two men were trapped inside the burning truck off to the side of the road. As the woman spoke with a 911 operator, Brown went to the armored truck. The passenger, who was in better shape than the driver, said, help us out, we can't get out. Brown rushed to his work truck and retrieved a hammer and a fire extinguisher. When he returned and told the passenger he planned to break the glass, his heart sank when he was told it was bulletproof glass and the truck was armored. The hammer had no effect on the windows. Brown used the fire extinguisher, but the fire burned out of control. 
Brown next tried to use his hammer to beat back the areas where the truck body was jamming the passenger door. As he worked his way down the door, the two men inside kept pushing on the door, trying to unlatch it. Finally, as the flames engulfed more of the truck and the smoke grew worse, the men inside forced the door open. One of the rescued men said of the resourceful and unrelenting Curtis Brown, he saved two lives that day. Mr. Brown, please receive your award. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Mr. Lyndon J. Blanchard, Mr. Evan G. Clements, and Mr. Christopher A. Runyon, please come forward and join us on stage. These gentlemen were nominated by the Lamar Police Department. On the evening of August 1, 2020, a shooting occurred in a Carthage hotel. A gunman had killed one victim and shot another before stealing a car at knife point in fleeing the area. There was an extensive search, and just before 8 a.m. on Sunday, August the 2nd, Lamar Police Officer John Simpson responded to a call for a suspicious person in the First Christian Church of Lamar. A man meeting the description of the killer was inside the church. Officer Simpton, Simpson attempted to detain the man, giving the command to place his hands behind his back and turn around. Instead, the suspected murderer responded, I'm not going back, I can't go back. He then reached inside his waistband of his pants and pulled out a knife. Officer Simpson tried to restrain the man and they crashed into a bookshelf and then to the floor where they continued to struggle. Simpson sustained a cut to his hand. Church members, Lyndon Blanchard, Evan Clements, and Christopher Runyon all immediately went to the officer's aid. All three assisted the officer as he struggled with the suspected killer, grabbing the assailant's arms to prevent further injury to the officer. Despite the risk to themselves, Blanchard, Clements, and Runyon bravely and selfishly came to the aid of Officer Simpson and prevented further injury to the officer. With their assistance, Officer Simpson was able to take the murder suspect into custody. Officer Simpson is with us today. Could you please stand? Thank you, Officer Simpson, for joining us today. Mr. Blanchard, please receive your award. Mr. Clements, please receive your award. And Mr. Runyon, please receive your award. Thank you, gentlemen. Jaden Groves, could you please come forward and join us on stage? Jaden was nominated by the St. Louis Fire Department. On August 8, 2020, a 22-month-old boy wandered away from a large family gathering in the Hyde Park area of St. Louis. His family began searching for him frantically. The toddler's 11-year-old brother, Jaden Groves, knowing that his little brother liked to play in water, immediately headed toward a nearby pond. When he discovered his brother fl floating face down, he jumped into the pond and pulled out his brother. And as a relative began providing CPR, Jaden raced to the nearby St. Louis Fire Department House Number 8, which he had visited many times in the past. 
he pounded on the front door. Firefighter David Rodriguez ran with Jaden to the scene. The little boy was still unconscious and unresponsive. The firefighter began rescue breaths until Engine 8 arrived and assisted with ventilation. The child showed signs of improvement during transport to a hospital, which was assisted with an escort from the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department. Jaden's little brother, of course, has made a full recovery. <laughs> And that recovery was, was made possible because of the calm, mature, and decisive actions taken by then 11-year-old Jaden in a very stressful situation. Jaden, please receive your award. Thank you all for joining us today. Mr. Miles A. Spandel, please come forward and join us on the stage. Mr. Spandel was nominated by the Lee Summit Police Department. On August 9th, 2020, Lee Summit Police and other emergency responders were dispatched to a vehicle on fire on eastbound Highway 50 in Lee Summit. When Lee Summit Police Sergeant Mike Murray arrived on the scene, he found Miles Spandle in medical scrubs already on the scene treating a victim who was in serious condition. Spandle, a St. Luke's Hospital emergency room trauma nurse, had been driving westbound on the divided highway. When he saw the burning vehicle, he immediately parked his car, grabbed his emergency trauma kit, and crossed the grass median to the eastbound lanes. The injured driver was in the driver's seat, confused, un unable to walk. The fire was spreading around him. Spandle pulled the driver out of the vehicle and then 50 feet away from the fire. He bandaged the victim's head and was stabilizing his neck when Sergeant Murray arrived. Spandle, Sergeant Murray, and Officer David Arnold next picked up the driver and carried him farther away from the fire and placed him behind a police vehicle for additional protection from the intensifying heat. Spandel continued to provide care to the victim until EMS arrived. Sergeant Murray believes had Miles Spandel not stopped and pulled the driver from his burning vehicle and provided emergency care, the victim would have sustained more severe injuries or even died. The victim made a remarkable recovery. Mr. Spandel, please receive your award. Thank you, Mr. Spandle. Mr. Brody J. Von Brethorst, please come forward and join us on stage. Mr. Von Brethorst was nominated by the Cedar County Sheriff's Office. On September 5th, 2020, a 17-year-old jumped from a 40-foot bluff into Stockton Lake, landed face first, and was knocked unconscious and disappeared into the water. First responders were alerted, but the victim but with the victim sinking in about 12 feet of water, time was of the essence. Brody von Bearhorst, or Brethorst, I'm sorry, a student at Missouri Valley College saw what had happened and immediately set out to attempt a rescue. Von Brethorst raced to the location where he thought the victim hit the water. He dove to the bottom of the lake, attempting to find the victim, but was hampered by low visibility. Upon surfacing, he called for a pair of goggles from the gathering crowd. After someone threw him a pair of goggles, Von Bredhorst dove in a second time. This time, he found the victim and pulled him to the surface. With help from others, Von Bredhorst got the tireless victim into a boat that had joined the search. The victim had no pulse, but after five minutes of performing CPR on the boat, 
several nurses who were enjoying Labor Day weekend at the lake managed to revive the victim. Things remain very much touch and go. The victim was intubated on a helicopter flight to a hospital and put on a ventilator once he arrived at the hospital. Five days later, the victim was released from the hospital. He has made a full recovery. In a highly stressful emergency situation, Brody Von Bredhorst had the ideal combination of intercom, stamina, quick thinking, and determination to save the young victim's life. Mr. Von Bredhorst, please receive your award. I believe some of the other people, our civilians assisted, are also in the audience. If that's the case, could you please rise or raise your hand so we can recognize you? Thank you for joining us today. I understand there's been a close relationship developed between the two of you, and we're very thankful for that. Thank you for being here. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you can see why I look forward to this day each year. The accounts we've heard this morning and the public safety officers and civilians we've met represent the very best of Missouri. Their courage is matched only by their decisiveness and their willingness to sacrifice for others. Their stories are all different, but there's a common theme. They acted without regard for their personal safety in a selfless effort to protect others. We're fortunate to have such public safety professionals and civilians of this caliber in Missouri. We're a better state because of each of them, and the youth of some of our recipients today demonstrates that each generation produces its share of heroes. On behalf of the Department of Public Safety, I extend my heartfelt congratulations to the award recipients. We appreciate you and we thank you for what you did. We want to congratulate all of you and your stories serve as an encouragement for others and your courage and your compassion inspires all of us. And I want to say a special thanks to those who submitted the nominations to highlight the work of these heroes. Without your initiative and your hard work, this deserved recognition would not be possible. I think many of them are seated back, well, probably all over the room, so thank you for the, those nominating them. Also, I want to say a special thanks to the chiefs, the sheriff, sheriffs, the colonels, and the commanders of these public safety professionals. Your leadership and values are evidenced by their actions. And we appreciate the value you place on human life. And thanks to all of you for joining us today to recognize our extraordinary winners. I'd like to say a special thanks to the Missouri State Highway Patrol Colonel Eric Olson for hosting the ceremony today, and Captain John Hotz and his public information and education team and the academy staff for their assistance. They've prepared the wonderful refreshments that we'll be joining in here shortly. Thanks also to our colleagues from the Office of Administration video team, Sam Swoboda and Marshall Franks, who have assisted in our live stream so that those who could not be here in person could view the ceremony. A special thanks to Judy Murray, our DPS Medals Program Coordinator, for all her hard work and organization skills, to Courtney Kavalowski and Tyler Hobbs and to Mike O'Connell for their assistance. This almost concludes our event. Will all the honorees pre please briefly join us on stage so we can take a group photo with Governor Parson. And to all the guests and family members, you're invited to come to the front and take pictures if you would like also. The governor has generously agreed to take part in pictures of our wards with the victims and their families. So if there's anyone wishing to have your photos taken, please join us up front on to the, my right or your left on this side. Again, thank you for joining us today and I wish you much safety and, and health through the coming year and appreciate your support 
of public safety throughout the state. Thank you.